friends, I'm going to just go over our similar triangle proof um, with my interpretation um, and my reasoning. I am a person who needs every single step. And so from our first assignment uh, that Mr. Kozel had assigned to us, I've kind of kept that same mentality that each step um, don't skip steps and make sure that everything was included. And I felt that was very helpful for me since I know that proofs, I struggle with proofs in general. And so I apologize if I have way too many steps here, but it just made sense in my head to do it that way. Um, I first wrote down the given statements that YZ is congruent to YV and that XY is congruent to Y excuse me, W-Y, and our goal is to prove that X-Y-W is congruent to triangle V-Y-Z. And here I had to be specific because if I'm thinking about how I would approach this, um, making sure that our corresponding parts um, was important to me not quite sure how I was going to approach this problem to begin with. Uh, so uh, making sure that I'm starting that X, uh, angle X and angle V, that they are um, co corresponding angles. Um, so I'm going, you know, from triangle X, Y, and then to W, and then V and Y to Z. So making sure that my corresponding parts I had straight before starting. And I really wasn't quite sure how I wanted to go. I did see that there were some sides that were equivalent. Um, so I thought about trying the, the side, 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 but then I realized X, W, and Z, V were not labeled in any shape or form, and I wasn't quite sure how I'd get there. So then I went on the... Um, just kind of labeling what I knew about the angles and it kind of just came together from there. So uh, since we have vertical angles, I knew that uh, angle XYW and angle uh, VYZ are vertical angles using our vertical angle theorem. So I knew that they were congruent. And then because I knew they were congruent, I knew that their measures were equivalent to one another. So the measures were equal. Because we know that um, we have two, uh, two congruent sides with each triangle, I knew that we had two isosceles triangles. So because of that, I knew that the uh, angles opposite those sides, these were going to be congruent to each other as well. So I knew that angle W is congruent to angle X. And then similarly, I knew that angle V is congruent to angle Z. And because of the definition of congruent angles, I knew that their measures were equivalent. So then I thought, well, gosh, I've got this measures happening here. Perhaps I could do angle angle for similarity. Um, so then I started with the angle sum theorem because I knew that the sum of the measures of the angles in a triangle must be 80 degrees. So if I added the measures of X, uh, excuse me, the measure of angle X plus the measure of angle W plus the measure of angle X, Y, W, that had to be 180 degrees. And then the smaller one, the measure of angle V plus the measure of angle Z plus the measure of angle V, Y, Z, that also had to be uh, equal to 180. Well, then I thought, oh gosh, I'm on a roll here. I could utilize the substitution property to help me out here um, with the step prior. So if I had substituted for the measure of angle W, the measure of angle X. And similarly, in the second equation, replaced the measure of angle Z with the measure of angle V, that I would have a common measure that I could combine together. So that was my next step, um, was simplifying. So I could combine that we have two times the measure of angle X plus the measure of angle VYZ had to be 180. And then now I have two times the measure of angle V plus the measure of angle VYZ has to be 180. 
At this point, I knew I could utilize the substitution property since they were both equal to 180. So I set the left side equal to uh, two times the measure of uh, angle X plus the measure of angle VYZ, and similarly two times the measure of angle V plus the measure of angle VYZ. Well, then I saw that on both sides, I could subtract using the subtraction property of equality. I could subtract that common angle of uh, measure of angle VYZ, leaving me then with the me uh, two times the measure of angle X equal to two times the measure of angle V. Again, using another property of equality, I could divide both sides by two such that they had a common factor to eliminate, leaving me with the measure of angle X equal to the measure of angle V with simplification. And then according to the definition of congruent angles, then angle X is e congruent to angle V. So this gave me my second angle. We had already found our first angle up here with that vertical angle. And now that I know that my corresponding angles are equivalent to one another, we can say that triangle XYW is similar to triangle VYZ. It also goes to show that angle, angle, angle might work here as well, since the measure of angle X is also equal to the angle W, and angle W corresponds to angle Z. And that is how I uh, approached this particular proof.